Hey there guys, Erica here from High 49 rc Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to assemble the G-Made XZ piggyback shocks here. I picked some up for one of my rigs, and I figured I would show you guys how to put them together. So, let's go ahead and open the package here, see what we've got inside. I've been looking at these shocks, actually, for quite a while now. Oh, let's cut that a little bit better. Yeah, I've been looking at these shocks for quite a while now, actually, and uh, I've finally gotten around to purchasing some. Hopefully you guys have come over here from my Crawford Cure build series for to see this. Alright, let's see. I have gotten shocks from G-Made in the past, and they have been pretty good. So let's see. Each bag comes with uh, two shocks. So we've got springs. We've got a couple parts trees here with looks like shock caps and spring retainers, and other various bits and bobs. We've got <coughs> instructions here, which is good. I'll make sure I take a look at those before I start assembling them. Looks like these are the plungers for inside the shock. And then we've got the reservoir pieces here. These are functional external reservoir shocks, um, or piggyback shocks, I should say. Here are the shock bodies, the shock shafts, o-rings, and eclips, bump stops, and rod ends, some more o-rings, and a couple other various little things. And the oil that comes with the kit. I'm not going to be using the oil that is supplied, I'm going to be using probably, looks like I've got some Team Losi Racing oil and stuff that I'm planning on using for these since this is just kind of mystery oil, you know? Use good oil. That's my one thing is you guys should use good oil. So let's go ahead and get into building this. Okay, so the first step that we're going to do for assembling these shocks is I'm going to grab the two Eclipse out of the bag along with the shock shaft and shock piston. I'm using the shock piston with three holes in it. Um, just because it's the one that's kind of in the middle, it comes with one that, or it comes with a piston with two holes and a piston with four. So what we're going to do is basically just take and clip, or uh, put the eclipse onto the shaft, or one of them. Like so let me zoom in a little bit more. For you. There you go. I've got one eclip on the shaft on the second little slot there, and now we're going to take and put the piston on it. Put our other e clip on and grab a pair of pliers. Gently snap it on like so. Now we have our shock shaft and piston attached. Okay, next we're gonna need this plastic piece off the parts tree. It's kind of a cylindrical shape. We're gonna need this weird sort of curved piece. Two of the um, clearish, like whitish clear o rings, a spacer with a slot in it, and a spacer without a slot. Hopefully, you guys can see one of them has a little slot on it, one of them doesn't. Um, make sure that when you are cutting these off of the parts tree, make sure that you use a hobby knife and trim off any excess plastic because if you don't, it'll lead to problems. And then any o rings that I show me installing in this tutorial. I've already put Team Associated Green Slime on. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically a little tube of literally green slime. Um, it's a product that Associated makes that is for sealing shock O-rings. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take and put one of the O-rings inside this piece. We're going to take the spacer without a slot in it, put it in on top of that, grab our second O-ring, stick that in there, and then take the spacer with the slot and push it in there. Now on this piece here, there's a section that, there's like a slot around the edge here. And on one side there's not, so you're gonna take this little clip and push it in on the side where there's not a, um, where the little, basically you're just gonna slip it in there. So I'm not sure if you saw, but like I just, it's basically, it's basically a big plastic e-clip. Like imagine my fingers are the e-clip and you slide it into the slot and it clips in. Then you're going to take your shock shaft. Where the hell did that just go? 
Oh, here it is. Ha! Huh. Then you're gonna take your shock shaft here, and you're gonna stick it through this way. And make sure you put the piston on the side with the threads of this black piece here. Um, you can also take and just rub a little bit of green slime on the shock shaft, it'll help it slide on there a little bit better. Alright, for the next step, we're going to need the aluminum shock body, the upper shock cap with the attached reservoir, this red aeration screw, and the smallest o-ring in the kit. It's in the same bag as this red screw. So we're going to take and put the o-ring onto that screw, like so, and then take our 2.5mm um, screwdriver here and thread it into the upper shock cap here. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the aeration screw functions, um, but you can look on Gmade's website for, I'm sure, a better explanation. And then we're just going to take the uh, shock body. Oh, I forgot. We actually also need this um, spring perch here. As you can see, there's a lip. You're going to put the smaller part down or towards, like, just like that, basically. Just going to thread that on a little bit, and then... Take and put the upper shock cap on. Just throw it on. Finger tight is fine. No need to grab it with the pliers and mess up the nice anodizing. So with that done, we can go ahead and start filling this with oil. So what we're going to do here for oil, I've got some Team Losey Racing uh, 40 weight oil here. You're going to put it into this side, you're going to fill it up about this far, and you're just going to sit and wait for it to drain through and fill up the piggyback reservoir. This for me has taken roughly 5 minutes or so, so I'm just going to put a decent amount in there, I need more than that. There you go, that's plenty. So, we're just going to let this settle for a few minutes and then we'll come back when it is filled up this other reservoir. Alright, so while we're waiting for that oil to settle, we do need to assemble another piece. We're going to need this plastic part off of the parts tree, looks like a little pulley, and two somewhat medium sized o-rings. I'm not sure exactly what their numbers are, but um, make sure that when you are assembling and watching this video that you pay attention to the instructions for um, what o-rings to use. So basically what I'm doing is just slipping the o-rings into the slots on this piece here. And this is going to sit inside the uh, piggyback reservoir on the shock. They are a little bit finicky to put on. And like I said before, I'm putting green slime on all my o-rings. Very, very important so that you don't end up with a leaky shock. And there you go, as you can see I've got my o-rings on, and it looks like my shock oil has almost finished settling, so let me wait for that and we'll come back and keep working on it. Okie dokie, so my oil has finished settling into the top of this piggyback reservoir. And what we're going to do is take this little piece that we just put together with the two o-rings on it, and slide it down into this reservoir, and make a big mess in the process. This is why I don't like doing shocks, because it's messy, but basically you're just going to take and push it down, grab your screwdriver, make sure that it's pushed all the way down to the very bottom of that reservoir. Then, I'm going to take and fill up the rest of this side, not quite all the way, but like three or four threads from the top is fine, helps minimize mess a little bit, and then you're going to take this plunger assembly, pull the black piece all the way to the top and just slowly push the plunger all the way to the bottom. Make sure that it's like touching the bottom when you're done. That's very important here. I need to grab it around here with paper towel so that it doesn't make as big of a mess. And just kind of start to thread it on, but not all the way just yet because we actually need to hold the... Okay, so now you've got this cap started a little bit, you need to take and hold 
both the plunger that you put in this side and the shock shaft all the way to the bottom um, to make sure that you don't end up with any weird gaps. This is rather difficult to do I find but it can be done and then take and continue to screw this cap on. Now you can take and while applying pressure to both the shock shaft and the little plunger, which is difficult, but it can be done. Tighten down this cap here. Make sure you have a paper towel underneath where you're working because otherwise you will never stop feeling this freaking silicone oil on your workspace. And just tighten it down like that. Clean up your shock and you're ready to move on here. Right, so the next things that we're now going to need are this aluminum uh, piggyback reservoir body thing, this large screw, um, cap head screw, a somewhat medium sized o-ring here, again don't know exactly what size but um, just look in the instructions what that came with your shocks to determine that, this plastic spacer, it's got a little bump on this side and a slot in the middle and a spring. So first we're going to take the spring, dump that down the piggyback reservoir. Then we're going to take this piece and make sure the little nub is facing down towards the spring so the hole in it should be facing up. So you can see there the hole is facing up. Now we're going to take our aluminum piggyback reservoir, thread that on, and my SD card is about to go out. Then we're going to just take and put the o-ring onto the screw and the screw into the piggyback reservoir. And that is a 3mm hex head, so you're going to need to either go get a special screwdriver or a special allen key or find one that you have. There you go. Just like that, we're ready to move on to the next part with the piggyback reservoir completely assembled. All right, we're on to the last steps here. So what we're gonna need is this red aluminum, uh, I guess, ball end ball, uh, spring cup, rod end, and uh, bump stop along with the spring. So we're gonna take and stick the bump stop onto the shock shaft first, and then carefully. I know I should probably be using a piece of paper in here, but I'm gonna take and, with my pliers, carefully grab the shock shaft without scratching it. Um, you can do it with just a pair of pliers without bothering with a um, without bothering with a piece of paper if you are using the bump stop. If you're not, I recommend that you do use a little piece of paper with your pliers to make sure that you don't scratch up the shock shaft too badly. Because um, the bump stop does cover where you're grabbing with the pliers, or at least where I am. So. Now I've got that, we're going to take and put the spring on, like this, grab our spring cup, slip it over the shock here, push it onto the rod end, push our bump stop down, seat the spring, grab our little rod end ball here, just give that a quick pop into place, just like that. And the final piece is just this top little ball end, or little ball that fits inside the top of the shock. Oh, and it does come with decals um, that you can put on if you would like. Um, I think I'm probably going to, but it is up to you whether or not you'd like to add these. These would wrap around right on this black part of the piggyback reservoir. <laughs> Guys, I got carried away. See that? I missed two o-rings in this shock. Ah, shoot, now I gotta take this all back apart. Um, I'm just gonna tell you where they go. One of them goes up here between the uh, reservoir and the shock cap. It sits inside of there. And the other one goes on this um, lower piece here uh, on the inside. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll take pictures and put it up on the screen where they need to go because now I gotta take this all back apart and I just washed my hands and now I'm gonna make a big mess. But hey, we've all done it at least once. Alright, give me a few minutes and I'll be back with you. And there you have it. There are the finished four shocks through the magic of editing, of course. 
I fixed that one, put the O-rings where it belonged. Hopefully you guys are still with me, because, you know, as soon as I start thinking, oh, this is actually going pretty good, uh, I screw something up, and, uh, so yeah. For those of you who are still watching, thank you. Um, I will say, the little stickers that come with it, oh my god, they suck, period. Um, for one, they don't stick. Why? Well, because it's literally impossible to not get any shock oil on the place where you're going to put the sticker, which means that the stickers basically don't stick. And then when, as you're touching the shock, trying to put them on, you're then putting oil on the sticker itself, which it kind of overlaps along itself. Oh, such a pain in the butt, let me tell you. So I'm not really going to worry about those if they start coming off. Um, they're basically just for show for right now for Crawl for a Cure and all that, as you guys know. Um, what I did do though is I just took some tire glue, put it along the seam, and hopefully that'll dry and hold up well. But I do like them. They feel really nice and they're adjustable too, so that's good. Um, and with that, thank you guys all so much for watching this tutorial on how to build the G-Made XD Piggyback Shocks. Looking forward to installing them. If you want to see them installed on a rig, make sure you go over and check out my Crawl Fairy Cure playlist and the video that should be coming out the same day that this is. Make, make sure you guys click that subscribe button, like button, notification bell, all that good stuff. Leave a comment down below if you have these shocks or if you are looking into getting them um, and if I helped you made, make that decision. So, thanks again so much for watching. Hope to see you at Crawl Fairy Cure and I will see you all next time.